today we're gonna make this using this and this on this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do today is surface this board because it is bowed. It's, it's in the long way with the grain. It lifts up about an eighth of an inch in the 42 inch, and it's only a 25-ish inch plaque that we're gonna do, or piece. But uh, it's also curved this way. Uh, so it's too wide for me to fit through the planer. So I'm just going to surface it with, this is a 19 millimeter Festool uh, two flute insert cutter. Programmed right now at 150 inches per minute with a 60 degree step over. Uh, two passes for a total of an eighth inch depth of cut. Uh, I had started cutting this and, and had started cutting the regular pattern and had seen that it was, as it came out of the material and was coming over, it was dragging into the top of the material. That'll all be sanded away, but there's no sense in starting off with a piece that's not flat. Why? So let the machine square it to the spindle and, and let it go. Now you'll see I am getting a lot of debris up here in the in the track. I don't want that. So there's options. I can hook up my four inch dust collector. I could cover it with some of these panels that I have cut. And if you do it like that and just drop it there, it really just stops the debris from sitting in the track. And just I had a, a customer, an early customer of ours that uh, I showed him what he was doing and he just did them out of some clear acrylic he put them on magnets he could put it up here get it out of the way put it in a new bit make any adjustments he needs to when he wanted to drop it he just dropped it down and I forgot how he had it set up but you get the idea if this travels across the X beam appropriately it covers the beam and you don't get any debris in it so if I'm gonna have it cut like this that's not good so what I would need to do is put in the dust chute that will help a lot as well so that threw in the old dust chute this is one of the original designs i just saw it and grabbed it uh, the other one is in my filing cabinet over here because um, i usually use my four inch dust collector setup on this type of setup uh, but this will but this will work well and that stops the bulk of it from coming out again these are simple things you need to do but you need to keep in track in mind that the wheels are traveling in this area you don't want them to be jumping on other materials so we'll let this thing surface this down um, I could flip it but what I'll do is I'll just do the entire engraving on this side then I'll flip it and just surface it to keep it flat okay so here it's basically finished its first pass um, and what I did was I drew it so it could work and I would hear it because I drew it oversized the rectangle oversized but I'd hear it when it's cutting air like right now and then if I'm in the shop elsewhere I can hear it and walk over and get a look at it it's still cutting the width a bit uh, but I've got it oversized in the Y direction on both ends uh, so because of how I had cut it before I do want to take all this down until this is gone um, if I had kept the origin ro ro the origin location I could have come back and just recut the top after it's been surfaced but I'll just take it down to a thinner plaque. I just grabbed some mahogany that I had in, this, in the shop. It was an inch and an eighth. Kind of thick to hang on the wall. No need for it. So it's ramping down. I'm going to start cutting. And we'll see once it moves out of the way if I need to make another pass. I've only programmed the two passes. But if I need to do another one, I'll just take the same program touch off here. Let it make one pass. And I'll stop it before it would take the second pass at that one surfacing routine. Okay now, so it is finished with the surfacing. It's nice and smooth. Um, and again, that's your chip load. That's what it should be. If you don't have good chip load, you're heating up your tool and that's dulling, dulling your bit. That's what it should look like. So uh, I'll clear this off and I'm gonna just use the same origin point, the datum point, and just tell it to go ahead and do the engraving, or well, the pocketing first, and then come back around with the 30 degree um, engraving bit and do the engraving of the date, which was very small. So, we'll keep going. Okay, it's cutting with the eighth inch bit. I did the, the tool change, and I also put the four inch dust collector on. Um, so I'm just gonna let it cut, and it's gonna do all the pocketing. I think I programmed it at 50 inches per minute, and I don't remember the step over rate, uh, but it's doing the full, full 
one pass, eighth inch depth of cut. This is a single flute, straight cutter. Does very nice edges and corners, all good. But there's going to be areas that it can't get into because of the width of the lines for the pocket can't get in there. So we're going to come back in with the 30 degree V bit, which will give some sh some slope to the shoulders, and we'll get in here and you know cut these. Uh, so that'll be an engraving pass that'll take more time because it's such a tiny bit with the 30 degree engraving bit, uh, but it'll give a nice finished product. So again, then I'll spray it in two different colors and then sand it real quick, and that'll take the uh, again. Th this is the 19 millimeter uh, surfacing bit. And it's, it's smooth, but the grain is rotated because it's coming around at a circle, so it breaks it, breaks the grain differently. So, 25% uh, and we're 10 minutes in, so 40, 40 minutes or so should be appro appropriate and correct for this. Uh, I think VCAR was saying 54 minutes. And again, it, it doesn't know the acceleration speeds and things like that. So, you can kind of tweak it for a certain type of work, but not an all-encompassing work that may include, you know, cabinet parts and engraving and things like that because they're all working at different speeds but um, it does give you a great idea of being able to get in there and modify the tooling and techniques to see what it's doing internally to the numbers uh, to how much it, you can reduce time. So I'm going to let this cut. I'm going to go grab some dinner. We'll be back in a bit. Yeah, here I'm just going to throw in a couple photographs that I took while I was doing it. That's showing the detail with the 30 degree engraving bit. Gives a little bit of a shoulder to it. Gives it a nice look. So I hog it out with an eighth inch bit and then followed that with the 30 degree engraving bit. You do have to clean out some of the corners. You've got some wood grain that gets stuck in there that's cut out. So this is a Nylox abrasive bristle brush. Chunk it in a drill. That's just showing some of the detail. So this is just mahogany. And then I'm going to spray it with white and an orange paint at different times in different layers. So I'm masking off the area that's going to be orange, spray this white, and then I'll switch this in the next step. Because the detail lines are so small here, um, you've got to spray it at an angle to get the paint to get down there. Um, and it won't show up as good. I mean, ideally, if I was doing this sign for a customer that was, you know, a, a paid customer or somebody who's doing the sign for a paid customer, It'd be great to do a white resin. There's all kinds of mix-all and, and colored pigments that you can put into a, a clear resin, epoxy resin, and slap that with white resin, and then surface the material again, and then a quick sandy. Sanding-wise, it took maybe two minutes to sand this thing real quick, and, and there's still some, some lines in it because I've got to sand it down and take the paint off. Um, and I had either 150 or 180 on the 5-inch pad. Uh, that I used. So I just knocked it down to take the fuzzy edges from the V bit, the engraving bit, off the edges. Uh, and then went through and picked them with uh, this. This is a Nylox uh, sanding uh, setup. And they have, they have different setups with different abrasion uh, amounts and different sizes and shapes of these abrasive strings or abrasive hair. Uh, I just did this manually and did it. Um, and I picked them with just little small picks, just walk, working my way around, pulling out things. And there's there's some areas that it, it, it knocked off. It's, it's over here. There's some areas where it knocked off some of these sharp, sharp corners. Uh, just because it's wood grain, uh, is it going to matter in the big picture? No. Is it a three-foot view that you see it? No. But when you're really examining your work, you're always more critical of it than your customers typically. Because um, you want to see what you need to do to change to make a better product next time. So... That's something we're going to have to do, is uh, maybe look at the design. If I was going to do this again, but I'm not. Uh, this is a one-time thing, just showing Adobe Illustrator, sucking it into VCarve, processing it using VCarve's tool paths, and then sending it to the machine. So uh, going to have to let this dry overnight. Um, I don't want to put tape on top of everything so that I can get to the other text and spray it orange tonight. I'm going to let this dry, shoot that, and then mid-morning I'll swap over and, and do the orange. Okay, so here I've got the painter's tape covering the areas. I swapped it so I could have the white and the orange areas painted. That's about it. And here I'm starting to do the border cutout with tabs for the um, product. This is with an 8 millimeter compression spiral. I didn't think about the cutting depth, so the first pass is probably not deep enough, not past the upcut portion of the spiral. But that's okay. I can just go ahead and... Um, 
I can either throw a chamfer, a 60 degree bit on it and do a chamfer on the tool path after this is done or just sand and round the corners. Um, I did not pull up the tape, I just let it cut right through it, uh, but I do need to connect my dust collector to it. And here it's finished, so I'm going to back out the uh, debris again. The compression spiral has a 3 16 upcut, roughly, and then the rest of the bit is down spiral, so it does pack. There's, there's advantages to that. It packs the swarf line, the cut line, with debris, so that even if you didn't do tabs, you're much less likely to have this thing move if I had done a CA glue and painter's tape type hold down or whatever, uh, any number of different ways to hold it down, but it, it packs it pretty hard. So I'm going to go through and just back that out with the shop back and then cut the tabs and pull this out and then we'll get a look at it. I'll pull the tape off, we'll get a look at it, and then we'll hit it with the sander real quick and that'll bring it back down to mahogany top surface, inset orange, top and bottom, and white for the OCC area. One thing that I do like to use is the job sheet that Vectric products produce. Uh, this gives you a drawing of the file, the tools needed, and things like that. But I like to mark where the tabs are as well so I can remember when I cut it. Now I'm just using the, I pulled the uh, dust extractor hose off the bottom of the, of the smart batch. I hook that up to here. And I've got the four inch dust collector running as well. That was going to take forever. And that's going to take forever. I'm going to change to more aggressive uh, paper. So when you start by using sandpaper that is not aggressive enough, it melts the paint and kind of pushes it over into all these cracks and detail lines. So I've got to pick them out. So what I've do, I've got a, uh, the dust collector there and just I just go in there and grab them real quick and they, it sucks them right out. Doing this left hand is this difficult for me because it's I'm a right handed guy. Uh, but anyway, it just picks it right out. Uh, but that way you can see the quality of the letters. And uh, that's worth doing. Oh, and one other thing, um, I did end up using a belt sander with it uh, to just knock off the paint, uh, but it had already done the damage with the palm sander, uh, but the belt sander too didn't do a great job, so the key is light coats on the finish. We all know that, but we still get in a hurry, and I was trying to get into the deeper indentations and engravings, and uh, I put it on too thick, and it still wasn't dry, so uh, taking care to do it the right way the first time saves you time in the long run. I did end up uh, putting another coat light misting on the white so that it could get into those crevices. I just think it's going to give it a lot better overall look. Um, so I'm going to let it dry again tonight and then uh, sand down the top tomorrow. So the only colors will be what's left in the engravings and uh, we'll see how it goes. So this did end up a very good looking project. Um, just mahogany, some rattle can white and orange paint. 8th inch straight cutter, 30 degree V bit, Yeti Smart Bench, and we just imported an Adobe Illustrator file that he had. So it was a straight AI format, brought it right into VCar. The vectors were all done. All we had to do was apply the tool pathing methods that we wanted to use with what tools we had. So this was a very straightforward project. Work, looks real good. I coated it with some mineral oil, and that's a finished project. I'll have a separate video showing how to import the file and toolpath it. Uh, the videos just get too long and too cumbersome to upload and, and edit, so I will do a separate file. Um, I, did this as a, I did this as a demo for one of my prospective customers, and he, uh, he's a sign maker. He has Adobe and works with it every day. So uh, that's a pretty quick project. Uh, it's going to take longer to edit the video than it does to actually cut the project out. It was uh, fairly quick, about an hour. Um, the process that I used for this was just bringing in the Adobe Illustrator file. Um, the prospect that I did the demo for, I did an online uh, remote control setup with him and showed him how to take the Adobe file, bring it in through vCarve and toolpath it. And then uh, we went straight to the machine at the end of the demo and then I did the machine work over the weekend. So um, 
if you have any questions about the Yeti Smart Bench, I'm happy to help you and uh, answer any questions that you have. Uh, that's Eric Schiller with Yeti Tool Southeast, 205-871-6618. Thanks.